In today's video, we're going to cover creating material functions and nesting them within your materials. We'll start with a very simple example uh, where we want to take a, a UV tiling setup and uh, create a material function from that that we can reuse over and over again in other materials without having to set up from scratch. Uh, then we'll also dissect a, a little bit more complex one, which is uh, a normal strength function. And then last, what we'll do is we'll go through um, a material that we've already pre-set up ahead of time and we'll collapse down uh, a bunch of nodes in that into a single material function that again we can reuse over and over again. So let's get started. All right, in this first example, I have a very simple material here. Uh, nothing complex. Uh, the only thing with it is that we know that it is 100% tileable. That is, we can repeat it over and over again. Uh, with this setup, there we don't have anything that allows us to control that tiling. So we'll set that up real fast. So I'm going to do a texture coordinate. I'm going to take this out to a multiply. And then from the multiply, I'm going to do a constant just as a single scalar. Uh, in this case, I'll set it to 1 and then we'll plug this into our UVs. Okay, so now that this process is set up, I'm gonna show you that this is working. So I'm gonna bump this up to four. So there we go. We're now getting the tiling pattern that we want. So this is very useful, this is very handy. Uh, probably something that I would want to use over and over again in other materials. Well, I, I could do this process where I create the texture coordinate node I create the multiply node, I create a value, and I do that every single time. Or we could set up a material function, and I'll show you what that process looks like. So um, I've got one set up ahead of time, which we will we'll show here in just a second. But the way you create a material function is right-click, materials, textures, material function. And we'll just say example, and we'll open it. Now, for all intents and purposes, it looks exactly like a material, and in a way, it kind of is. So I'm going to jump back real quick. I'm going to change, uh, actually just copy paste these guys because we know we want to use that. I'll plug that as my output. The, the difference here with the material function, uh, which we'll see in just a second, is that it allows you to be able to plug in values in the base material. So I'm going to change this guy. Instead of doing a value that I have set here, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do a function input. And I'm going to have it set as a scalar, and I'm going to call this tiling amount. And then I'm going to set my preview as 1, just so it has something. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this, save it. And I'll go back to my, my basic here, and I'm going to remove this guy. I'm going to throw an example in here. So there we go. So it shows up, there's that tiling amount that we had set right here, this input. right? It gives us a little node that we can drag off of, and we can do a constant. And now I have the ability to control this guy and then just plug the result out into here. The advantage with material functions is that with it being collapsed down exactly like this, we don't have to see the rest of everything that goes uh, on behind it. Now granted, with this example, it's very, very simple. Um, and, and that's why I'll move on to something a little bit more complex. Uh, but that is that is the whole point behind what we're trying to get at with these material function is to simplify our graph, clean it up, make it a little bit easier to use. Let's dissect another one that we have here, which is uh, a normal strength. So this is a typical, um, a, a typical setup that we'll use in our materials. And with that, we have a normal map that comes in, again, a, a vector three, and we break it out into red and green channels. That's ultimately we want, what, what we want to multiply. And then we append the blue channel back into it, which you don't want to multiply because of uh, reasons I would go into in, in this video. But uh, suffice to say that when you want to bump up your normal channels, you do the red and green, you don't do the blue. So uh, we have this normal coming in, breaks out red and, red and green channels. We multiply it by, again, another input that we can set, uh, which in this case is just a scalar. And then we append the blue channel back in and the output goes out. So to show you what that looks like here, um, I'm going to take this normal strength material function, drag it in, and I'll show you here. We'll just drag this guy off. So there's our base normal, right? This vector three. So this comes out, three vector. And then we also have this normal strength, which is a scalar. So we'll go our constant. And I will plug this into the normal channel. 
zoom in here a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. So set at zero right now. Let's bump it up to 10. So there we go. So we have a much more intense normal, right? So if I didn't have this normal strength setup, I would have to each and every time create this exact same workflow. So this effectively replaces this, this setup, right? So I'm gonna delete this here. So this is what I would have to set up every single time I created uh, any material that I wanted to use. I'd have to do the mask, mask blue, yada, yada. And that's not necessarily a pain because it's very simple, but we can make it easier on ourselves by simply just creating a new material function, putting everything in there and drag it in. And now this is all I have to connect. Exactly like that. And it's all set up. And again, the other beautiful part about this is that with this material function, it it's kind of stored in this library now that I can reuse over and over again on other materials. Okay, so let's move on to a little bit more complex example, uh, something that you may run into uh, in in your setup. So uh, I've got this just kind of complex master material that I've set up, um, and that's not what we're going to go over, but I, I've got this whole process here with all of my, my base color that it, it's not terrible, um, but let's say, for example, that I, I want to collapse this down into kind of a, a single material function that I can reuse over and over again. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just select everything that I know that I want to be a part of this. I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go into my material functions. Let's go ahead and create a new. So I'm going to materials and textures, material function, and I'll call this base color. We'll open this guy up and I will paste everything in here, move them, and we'll connect this output. Okay, so again, the idea behind this is that we want to collapse everything that's within this into kind of a single node that we can control. So with it, the first process that I want to do is I need to go through and start replacing these guys because I want those exposed on the outside to be able to plug my own variables in. So we'll just start kind of from left to right, drag off here, and we'll do a function input. And uh, this guy is set up to one, so I'll go ahead and delete them. We'll do our preview weight as one and we'll call that base color multiply okay and we'll keep him there so I'm just now going to start copy pasting and plugging it in and renaming the exact same thing right so base color tint amount so base color tint amount and it was set at zero so we'll set zero as our preview weight I'll copy paste We'll do another one here for our base color tint. We'll do a blend. Go here, base color tint. Delete this. And if you notice too that with color, it is a, uh, a three vector, right? We've got a red, green, and blue. So with the base color tint, I have to change this from a scalar to a scalar three. Now, if in the base color tint, you were doing something with your alpha channel or you had say a texture with an alpha channel, you would need to make sure that you change it to a vector four to include that. But in this case, cause it's just color, we'll do vector three. So there we go. We got our base color tint. Keep going here. Let's do hue shift. There we go. Preview of zero, perfect. And we'll just keep going across. And again, all, all we're doing here is just, uh, function input that's it that's all it is i've just collapsed it and we're just copy and pasting for time's sake we'll go here and this one we'll call desaturation amount again just name it like i had in the original setup and that set a preview of zero there we go and then we'll come here we'll skip this here for just a second because we'll have to go back find out what's going on there and we'll do dirt color addition Plug him in, he is a scalar, preview of zero, done. Okay, so we have this area here because we have something that needs to be inputted as our blend. So let's go back to our material here and let's look where this guy's coming from. Okay, so it's a dirt mask and this whole process, everything's coming out. Okay, so I presume that that is going to be a scalar three. So we'll change this one since it's actually passing all the information and we'll say dirt color. What do we have here? Yeah, so we'll call that dirt mask input. There we go, and we'll plug it in. And 
Done. Okay. Oh, actually, we're we're missing this guy, which is our base color. So I'm gonna do. I'll just seal this guy because we know it's just a texture three vector, and I'm gonna put a preview weight of one in just to make it white, and we'll say base color. Plug him in, and done. Okay. We'll save this, and then I'll show you wh where this would uh, where this would apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this over top. Right, so we've created this new material function and we'll throw it in here. Okay, so there, let's do this. So there's all of the inputs that we've created, right? Input base color, which is right here. We've got input color multiply, which is here. Base color tint, there we go. Okay, so everything is here that we've exposed as a parameter coming in. Uh, let's say, for example, with our desaturation, we, we didn't want this, right? And I'll go ahead and apply and save. And a slight bug here, right? We have, oh, actually, no, I know why it's going to show up. We'll just delete it for a second. We'll apply. There we go. And now it's gone. So anything that you do expose uh, will show up in here in just choose to set up however you want to, but uh, let's let's move on to the next thing, which I, I don't like the way that these things are arranged. So there's a quick way to do that. In here, you have each one of your inputs has a sort priority. So I'm just going to move from left to right because that's kind of how I want it set up. Input of zero. Next one will change to one. Next one to two. Next one to three. So on and so forth. So we'll get these in real fast. Change it to five, six and seven and if i save it and there we go now they're in the order that i i wanted it okay so we'll close this guy because we know he's good now with this process i could i could choose to hook uh, i could i could change everything that and the way that this would look is um i could take my base color i could take my base color multiply i could take my base color tint my base color tint amount Let's see, hue shift right there, base color hue shift, desaturation amount, and then we have our mask input, which I'm just going to take here, and then we have our dirt color addition, and then everything is being processed out through this guy. Done. Okay, so that means we effectively could delete. Now, granted, we have this coming out as well. And I'll show you here. So uh, our specular channel is taking the red. So we're going to come back and we'll fix that here in a second. So we, we can delete all of this. Oop, I did not want to delete all my variables. So we'll just delete these guys. Perfect. Okay, so there we go. So now we've kind of cleaned up this whole graph to where it can take a much smaller footprint. Something like that. So there we go. So we, we've effectively taken all of uh, that information and collapsed it down into a single material function. Again, this is uh, kind of a crude example, but you can see where you could, if, if there's things that you're constantly processing over and over again in a material that you want to reuse, material function works great for that. Um, okay, so let's, let's do this as well. So we've got, right, we need to come out for our spec channel. And... In this case, we, we could do the result out, but if you remember from the original setup, um, so if I go back to this base color, uh, this is actually where we came out to the red channel, right? Because we didn't want to uh, include any of that, uh, in this case, the dirt information, the dirt switch. So there's a way we can do that. If we take, um, I think you can right click and do output, um, or just select it copy paste we'll do another output in this case I'll say uh, to spec channel and then I will take this guy and output here let's save him and let's go back and look at what our function is aha there we go now we have a new output so we can take this take it to our red channel and done so that is the the, the basic setup and, and kind of the the idea behind using material functions it allows you to kind of create these these nice compacted clustered uh, setups uh, that you could reuse over and over again in your materials so again kind of a crude example but hopefully that helps so thanks for watching